Another very useful thing we can do with dplyr is arrange our data. So if we were to look at our filtered data here, if we look at these columns, they're, they're, they don't really have any order to them, right? We could order these in a ways that we find useful if that's something we wanted to do, right? So maybe we could sort by uh, these hours. And in fact, you can even click in here in our studio to do some sorting but we can also do it programmatically so that you can output reports uh, in the right order. So let's do something interesting, all right? Let's, um, let's arrange just by the date, okay? So we want to go year, month, and then day. So the way that we'll do that is we'll say arranged, arranged filtered data. We're going to use this arrange function from from dplyr and actually if you want remember you can always pull it up as well in the help file and so if we want to see arrange rows by variables this will give us all the documentation on that function and we have some examples down here as well but I'll just tell you it works like this okay so within the arrange function give it the data you are interested in arranging so filtered data and then you give it the columns you want to sort by so we're planning to go year, month, day. Okay, to make this visible, you can also break the, break your lines and run them all at once. So this is going to create a new data object for us, and it's going to be called arranged filter data. Now, when we click in here, we're going to see the years are sorted, and then the months are all sorted, and then the days. So this is now ordered by their entry in time. We go back to our old data set, which wasn't arranged, we'll see that that was definitely not the case. So we had uh, jumping up to month 10 here, and then we jumped back later to 2. So it wasn't really arranged, but now we, we have a nice clean way to arrange the data. And one more comment, since so this is the first time we've done this, is about breaking the lines within a function. So we have this arrange function, right? And it's covering multiple lines. Uh, you can do this because R is not going to care about your your enters here, right? So we could set this function up in multiple ways if you wanted to. I wouldn't recommend doing this, but this is just to show an example. These lines don't really matter as far as R is concerned. It's going to bring this all back. So as long as you have the right f the right formats within the function, these commas will still run this and we can even say new data thing okay if we run this it's going to be fine but we'll be able to produce the same thing but that's obviously hideous uh, but y there's oftentimes going to be cases where you want to break the line because in this case right we couldn't even see the end of it when our when our name here was too long right so it could be clean to say, okay, here's our data we want to add, and then maybe we'll make a new line that just shows how we want to order it, right? This is a very clean way to write this. And then when we run this, new data two, we'll see that it, it works. So that's a nice way to make your, make your code clean and easy to read. All right, see you in the next video.